uh, in this video i will be teaching you the poem sweet stay at home by w h davis and uh, this is part 2 and here i am going to deal with line number 11 to line number 21 In the previous video, I have uh, dealt with line number one to line number ten, as you can see. Uh, a brief recapitulation of what I have done. Uh, this poem is thirty lines poem, so I have divided this poem into three parts. From line number one to line number ten was part one. From line number eleven to line number twenty-one was part two, and uh, part three will be from line number twenty-two to line number thirty. Now, what is this poem all about? This poem is what the traveler feels from his point of view for the people uh, who you know stay at home. According to him, the people who stay at home maybe they are deprived from so many beautiful sights that uh, Mother Nature gives us to see. As I have written a short summary on the whole point that according to traveler there are many things all over the world that homesick people, homesick people are the people who stay at home uh, do not see because they are deprived from the beautiful scenes that surrounds the world. Okay, uh, I'll give a brief recapitulation of what we have done in part one. Part one, according to the traveler, uh, the homesick people that are deprived from different kind of sights. What are they? First, uh, he spoke about uh, that they are not able to know about many strange continents, and then the heart of these kind of people, uh, you know, they, they don't beat when they see beautiful things. Then uh, they are not able to sail through the Indian Ocean. Next, uh, that according to the traveler, they are not able to get the fragrance from the breeze. Uh, fourth, that uh, the traveler says that. Uh, maybe the people who are homesick they are not able to see the beautiful valley filled up of uh, you know greenery why greenery because it's of grapes it's full of ripened grapes uh, most importantly their eyes is not able to see uh, the hard work of the maid that they do what what do they do they sew okay they kind of stitch and how do they stitch They stitch in just that one slide. In the previous video, also I have spoken that uh, through the images or whatever symbolisms or whatever naturistic view that the poet is giving us, we can be sure that maybe the poet is basically talking about the villages area, because the poet is talking about you know greenery field. Uh, the poet is talking about you know. summer's night when uh, there is no light at all uh, maybe maybe uh, this entire scenery belongs to the village now i come to the next part which is uh, from the north sea to the plain dunes of the bloom uh, sorry plains full of dunes so uh, first line as it goes not the north sea in spring send out bright hues that like birds fleet about in solid cages of white ice so here is a kind of comparison is used what kind of comparison according to the traveler the people who stay at home they are not able to visualize the sky of the north sea above the north sea and how is the description that he is giving he says that the clouds that moves about in the north sea the movement of the clouds is very similar to the fleets that is the fly or the gliding movement of the birds in the solid icy cages so the movement of the solid you know uh, i mean the clouds is compared here uh, with the birds the birds that move around that fleet about in the cage next sweet stay at home sweet love one place so why is the traveler saying that sweet stay at home sweet stay at one place why sweet stay at one place because maybe the people who stay at home they love staying at home they love being confined they love to be in their place and that is the reason even though they want to go out uh, the, even though they can go out they don't want to go out because they love uh, to stay in their own comfort zone they don't go out so they they love their home sweet home next line thou has not seen black fingers peep so it said over here that maybe uh, these um, people who stay at home they are not able to see many beautiful sights and here one color imagery is used why color imagery because i read out the line thou has not seen black fingers peep white cotton when bloom is thick see white and black in these two lines i have you uh, the, the poet has used two colors black and white but it has got symbolisms as well 
See, black hands, okay, black fingers are for the people, especially who work hard. Maybe they have, uh, you know, the, there's dust and uh, there is dirt in the hand. They have worked so much. So those hands, they pick up cotton, okay, uh, from the field. Uh, for their for maybe purpose of export or something so they do these kind of works so according to the poet this is a beautiful sight when a hard working people pick up the cotton which is the color of the cotton is white and the dirt of the uh, hand of the, of the man's hand who is picking it up is uh, you know not making the cotton dirty the rather it is being more purified because the person with immense hard work is kind of breaking up the cotton. Beautiful lines you should underline in your textbooks. Next, nor heard the black throats in harmony. Black throats, so here black throats, maybe they are talking about the birds. So the people who have not gone out, they have not heard the black throats uh, who are in harmony, who are singing song. Nor hast thou satin stones that lie flat on the ground that once did rise to hide proud kings from common eyes. Thou hast not seen flames full of bloom. So very important few lines in the last paragraph you see. I'll give example if any of you have uh, visited a place where you find historical ruins. Okay. So here basically that historical ruins are being spoken about. Why historical uh, ruins are being spoken about? See, they are telling that you may be as you have not visited different kind of place. You have not gone and sat on the stone. Which once uh, this stone was used to cover up the wall. Now I'll tell you one thing. Kings uh, in the previous uh, age or in historical times they used to think themselves to be very superior so what they used to do uh, they used to create a wall okay because they wanted to keep themselves separate uh, from the rest of the world from the uh, rest of the people uh, from the rest of the people whom they think that they are inferior so they wanted to create a boundary now all these things have uh, you know diminished and things have gone over and these palaces have just broken down and the stones that once used to cover the pride kings uh, have now you know it's uh, it's ruined so it's all dumped down. So when it is down maybe people who go there to visit you must have sat on that place when you are shown this historical sites. But the people who have not visited any historical site for that people it is not possible to see such things such historical things. Um, and here that is the reason it is written over here to hide proud kings from common eyes. So you're not able to do anything and uh, you're able to just sit at home. You're not able to go and visit the places, the stones which once covered the uh, king's uh, palace. Next, uh, the last line uh, for this part that says, Thou hast not seen plains full of bloom. Plains full of bloom. Bloom here means flowers. So as these people have not visited uh, the valleys, such places, you have not seen sites where the valley is full of uh, flowers. You know, it's full of flowers. It's full of flowers. Uh, and you have not visited such beautiful site, which is so beautiful. The valley full of flowers. So all these imageries and symbolisms and, uh, um, you know, comparisons are used. Uh, most of the description that we can see uh, belongs to that village area. Am I clear? So maybe it is such. Thank you.